It's a beautiful uh, morning here in uh, Amaria, Spain. We got an awesome bunch of beautiful tigers here lined up, and we should have a full day of street riding today, and then a little bit of off-roading going on tomorrow. Well, let's take a look. It's a really lovely ride. I think if you're a sport touring mount and you want to do a little bit of uh, gravel riding and uh, hit it up off-road, but really, even if you're doing any touring, sometimes you're going to run into rough road conditions. The automatic suspension seems to perform really well. There's no surprises. The Metzler tires are incredibly well planted. And you can get this thing leaned over enough that your boots start scraping. So. All in all, just extremely happy. There are some very obvious updates. This is not just a bold new graphics edition of the Tiger 1200. It's more exciting. We should also talk about the new readout. One of my biggest complaints with the old Tiger was the fact that it had some very confusing information panel systems. It didn't really make a lot of sense sometimes what you were trying to do, even with some extremely simple functions. They really kind of sorted all that out. Here's some traffic on the road here. With this new TFT display, everything is pretty much managed right in your uh, little joystick, which is right under the turn signals on your left thumb. So it makes it much easier to, to change your settings. We've been in a lot of traffic and twisties so far, so I haven't had a chance to really play with that. But from the demos and stuff that we've, that we've seen, it really shouldn't be as mentally complicated as a lot of them. All in all, what an exhilarating bike. Yesterday on the street portion, got to play around with all the fine tuning adjustments you can do. Where well, you're talking about being uh, set for sport, which is firmer, or soft, which is more what they call comfort. And the main thing here is that they've really done a hell of a job with this kind of active suspension. There are two off-road modes for the 1200. There's off-road, there's off-road pro. Off-road pro is pretty much unhinged a setting that you can do on it that completely disables front and rear ABS and then I believe also traction control would need to confirm that. And then off-road gives you a little bit of traction control on the back and then full on ABS on the front. And right now when we're hanging out on the bumps and everything like that what happens is the front wheel the sensors uh, observe some behavior and then the computer kind of tells the rear wheel that something similar might be happening. So it's pretty complex but the bottom line is that it works. Well, now we don't have luggage on here or even two up or anything like that. But still, with all the automatic sensing and adjusting, I really don't think that this would be a problem. Now in off-road mode, what it also does is it lowers the rear suspension so that it increases the rake on the bike, which gives you a little bit more off-road stability. But, I mean, that's the thing with the modern bikes. There's just so many small nuances that can go into it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Now versus the old Tiger 1200, I can already say, is it more off-road capable? I think it's a pretty much a no-brainer. The answer is yes. Upgrades to the engine are no joke. Better power delivery. It's extremely smooth power delivery. I would probably say maybe one of the uh, best power delivery I've seen on any fuel-injected bike. The other important thing to mention is the fact that they've really minimized the shaft drive lash, which is fantastic. You don't get this tremendous clunk uh, after you apply power. Now, I don't know if it'll always be like that, but now it's incredibly smooth. The other thing we're noting too is that because there's so much torque in the motor, you know, you don't really have to push it all that hard. And also the Triumph Tiger 1200 with the new electronic management it actually never really lugs and it can pull you out of stuff even uphill from some very low RPM so 
Really, there's just a lot to love about it. The seated geometry is very comfortable, I think, for probably a lot of people of uh, any different height. Where sometimes bikes fall apart in OEM is the standing geometry, especially for taller riders. And I would probably say that there's not much that needs to be done in terms of the standing geometry. Usually what you need is at least bar risers. And uh, I probably wouldn't complain at six feet if this was about an inch higher. But if I was anything underneath six feet, it really probably might not be a problem. Might not need anything from the get-go. The seat is very comfortable, whether you're off-road or on. Again, seats have seen a huge improvement over the past several years. And this version of the XC has the wide metal pegs. So it's a lot of fun. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's really just good to go. There's not much you need to do. Grand summary for the 2018 Tiger. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I have to big it a big old thumbs up. I'm going to admit I'm not a big bike guy. I love small motorcycles, especially for off-road. But having ridden the previous generation of the Tiger 1200, I think there's no doubt that this is a massive improvement and we're not just looking at cosmetic upgrades. Pros, electronics are fantastic. The way that now that integrates obviously into everything else. We're talking about everything from the interface, the different riding modes. Now that they've added the off-road and the off-road pro modes, and there's no doubt this thing is more off-road capable. For a large bike, someone with probably more aggressive riding style than myself off-road, they could really have a tremendous amount of fun on these things for a 1200. Comfort, riding geometry is fantastic. Even for someone who's about six feet tall, sitting or standing, you know, you're in pretty good shape. <clears throat> Minimal modifications needed. Value, the, the price on it has gone up a little bit. I think generally somewhere around the thousand dollar range, but actually if you look at what you're getting now over the previous versions, there's pretty much no comparison. Even previous Tiger 1200 owners may want to take a look at it if they're happy with the mount in general. I think with the engine updates and everything, they would probably see it as a more fun and more capable ride. Cons, there's not a whole lot to be said for cons for this type of bike. I mean, it's a large bike, you just have to live with that, whether you're going off-road or whatever. Some of, some of the other folks had maybe said that, uh, well, maybe with some of the lightened components in the engine, now it's a little bit more buzzy. I think everyone feels differently about bar vibrations. It just really bugs the hell out of some people and not out of others. But aside from that, there's really not a lot to knock. But if you're not a big fan of all the new computerized electronics and sensors and stuff like that, you know, then any modern large bike is really not going to float your boat. But what we have here is a very well-rounded package that would appeal to a lot of people that are in this market for this category of bike. And if you are, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Thanks for watching everyone. This is Carl Parker from ADB Moto signing out. Ride safe and have fun.